G'day guys, just running through what we covered yesterday in class, solving linear equations. Remember, what we're doing when we're solving linear equations, we have an overall objective. What we are trying to do is isolate the unknown by performing inverse operations. Remember, inverse is a term we use for undoing what has previously been done to something to undo the effects of something. So our inverse operations, the inverse of addition is subtraction, and the inverse of subtraction is addition. Same with multiplication, the inverse we can think of as division and division multiplication. Or remember the other little trick that I reminded you, the inverse of multiplying is multiplying by a reciprocal, because of course that's what division actually is. The guiding principle that we need to follow, whatever you do to one side of the equation, you must do to the other in order to maintain equality. So we're adding or subtracting, multiplying or dividing. As long as we do that to each side, we will be fine. Let's have a look and just do a quick refresher on how to do some of these questions. So here I have 3 plus x equals 7. 3 has been added onto x, the opposite of 3. The inverse of positive 3 is negative 3. So I just subtract 3 from each side. Remember, if you cannot write down what you're doing each step, like I did just then, then you probably don't fully understand what you're doing. And I know some of these easy ones, it's very easy to get to the answer, but not necessarily to know what you're doing. So I subtracted 3 from each side. That's why I go 7 minus 3 over on the right-hand side, and I get x equals 4. The next one, the variable g is being multiplied by 5. The inverse of multiplying by 5 is dividing by 5 or multiplying by 1 fifth. You know that they're equivalent, so that's okay. I'm going to just, can I pin that there? It's not going to let me pin it. So what's the equivalent expression that I have now? Well, 5 divided by 5, they cancel, don't they? They go to 1s. So I have g equals 25 divided by 5 is just 5. The next one, m divided by 4 equals 9, the opposite of dividing by 4 is to multiply by 4. So I multiply each side by 4. Now on the left hand side I am just left with m and on the right hand side 9 4s give me 36. The last one k minus 3 equals negative 2. The opposite of subtracting 3 is to add 3. So I do that to each side and that leaves me with the value of k equaling remember, negative 2 plus 3. Well, that's just 1, isn't it? So there we go. The first four, pretty easy. Nothing too complicated there. The next two look almost the same. Here I've got 2 outside of x plus 3 equals 8. Then on the other side I've got 3 outside of x plus 2 equals 8. You always have two options when you get to this in an equation that looks like this. So when you maybe simplify one and get down to an expression, an equation that looks like this. I can either expand the bracket or I can divide by the number in front of the bracket. Now, I would recommend that the way to decide is to see whether or not that value in front is a factor of the number on the other side. You can see in question 5 here, 2 is a factor of 8. So when I divide by 2, I have made the question easier here. 2 divided by 2, cancel the common factors. So I am left with x plus 3 equals 4. I now subtract 1 from each side. Oh, got the wrong colour pen there. Chewy. Subtract 3 from each side, maintaining equality. And I am left with x equals 1. Not so bad, that one. If I tried at this point, to divide by 3. It would still work, but I'd be introducing a fraction. I would have x plus 2 equals 8 over 3 when I divide each side by 3. And in my experience, students are better off not working with fractions until they absolutely have to. So I'm going to show you the alternate working here. Where I'm going to use my distributive law to expand that bracket. So I have 3x and then 3 times 2 is 6. So 3x plus 6 equals 8. Now I can get rid of the 3 and the 6. Now which one do we get rid of first? You remember the analogy, it's like getting dressed or undressed. You can't take off what's next to you until you take off the outer layers. This 6 is an outer layer, so I've got to get rid of that first. So I subtract 6 from each side, and I have 3x equals 2. Now to undo multiplying by 3, I have to divide by 3. 
But the advantage of waiting is that the fraction only turns up as the final step. I don't need to worry about doing any addition or subtraction with fractions. X equals two thirds. It's just a little bit easier. So something to keep in mind, if you've got a bracket with a number in front of it, you want to decide if the number is a factor of the value on the right, go ahead and divide. If it's not, you're probably better off expanding. 7 and 8, two similar questions here. On the top I've got x plus 2 divided by 5, whereas in the other side I've got 3j divided by 5. So you can see that there's a difference when there's addition on the top or subtraction, so two terms on the top, as opposed to one term, which is just a product of factors. Over on this left-hand side, I want to multiply by 5 because the 5's got the least amount to do with the x. That's my outer layer. The 5's are going to cancel on the left-hand side. The opposite of dividing was to multiply. We've done that well. So now I've just got x plus 2. That 5's cancelled that one. They go to 1's. Yep. x plus 2 equals 55. And now I can just subtract 2 from each side. So getting rid of those denominators is definitely a good way to go. So here I have x equaling 53. Question 8, 3j divided by 5. I could start by multiplying by 5, multiplying each side by 5, because that's going to get rid of the denominator. But remember I said the opposite of multiplication is multiplication by a reciprocal. This expression here is really 3 fifths of j. If I multiply by the reciprocal, can you see that the 5 and 5 are going to cancel out and the 3 and the 3 are going to cancel out? And in one step, I will have got to an answer that I can work with. I'll have got to the j on its own straight away. That's a very quick method of getting to an answer. It's the fastest way of getting there. And if you understand what you're doing, it's the easiest way of getting there. Of course, you could multiply by 5 and then in the next line divide by 3, but I think doing it all at once is easier. 20 times 5 over 3 is just going to be 100 over 3. As far as I'm concerned, that's a beautiful answer. You can leave it like that. If you want to simplify it into a mixed number, you can. But as you move up in high school, you're going to find that improper fractions are preferable because they're much easier to substitute into other equations. So leaving it as an improper fraction is just fine by me. Finally, a little challenge question here. I've got the variable on both sides of the equation. I've got nasty little bits everywhere. We need to be careful here. We want to simplify each side first before we try and do anything else. It's very tempting at this point to go 9 minus 7 is 2. But you would remember that you need to multiply before you do any additional subtraction. So to simplify this left-hand side, I leave the 9. I'm going to go negative 7 times v is negative 7v. Negative 7 times 2 is negative 14. On the right-hand side, I'm just going to leave that 3v alone. And again, I'm going to expand the bracket. Negative 6 times v, negative 6v. Negative 6 times 1 is negative 6. Still, stick with your one side and simplify that side. So in terms of these, on the left-hand side, I have negative 7v. And then 9 minus 14, that's going to be negative 5. On the right-hand side, I've got three v's. I then need to take away six of them. So that leaves me with the shortage of three, doesn't it? Three minus six, so that's negative 3v minus six. Now it becomes easier. I've got these on both sides of the equation. What I want to do is I want to get them all on one side. Seeing as though negative 7 is smaller than negative 3, I am going to choose that one to move. So I'm going to add 7v to each side. The advantage of that is it's going to get rid of these negatives and make them positives. Given that I'm going to put all my v's on the right-hand side, I want to get rid of anything that's not a v from the right-hand side. So the opposite of subtracting 6 is to add 6. And so I'm going to do that to each side as well. So as long as you're showing you're working there, it shouldn't be too bad. So keeping track of what's happening on each side, showing you're working, just makes it easier for you and easier for the person marking your exam. So negative 7v plus 7v, we knew they were going to get rid of each other. Negative 5 plus 6, that goes to 1.
that's looking a lot nicer already. On the right hand side, negative 3v plus 7v, negative 3 plus 7 is 4, so that's going to be 4v, and negative 6 plus 6 cancel out. Last step, 1 equals 4v. To get v on its own, I need to do the opposite of multiplying by 4, which is 2 divided by 4. Therefore, 1 quarter equals v. If you want to write v equals 1 quarter, that is, of course, fine too. That's a lot of examples there, but hopefully that will be enough to keep you going if you got stuck on any in the exercise. See you in class, guys. Keep up the good work.